the gigantic gospel concert is back Sunday, April 14th at the Fountain of Praise, featuring the legendary John P. Key. Tell me about it, Pastor John P. Key. Hey, Father, for nothing, for this gigantic gospel concert that Sunday, April the 14th. I'm going to be there. My son, Sakari Cordes, Kalante Gavin, Dr. Kinja in the Allies, the Cat and Spiritual, Lisa Knowles, and the Brown Singers. Get your tickets at eventbrite.com or ticketweb.com. Hey, Father, for nothing, for this the gigantic gospel concert. family and friends we experienced an amazing Sunday last week as we celebrated our resurrected Lord and Savior our pastors inspired us to all keep spreading the good news Jesus lives I am Natalie Bashford and I'm Brittany Lewis welcome to the fountain of praise a place of refreshing can we please give a big shout out to our worship arts ministry as well as praise productions teams and hospitality in the Rock Youth Church for making Easter Sunday an unforgettable experience. And the message beginning a new chapter, Pastor Preach the House Down. You are so right. And with that same expectation of a blessed service on this Sunday, we extend to you, our church family and visitors, a heartfelt welcome. Yes, so settle in wherever you are and let's get our Sunday started. Seeing what's on this agenda for the week. Remember, all these events can be found on tfop.org slash connect. Ladies, mark your calendars. We are thrilled to announce that the Flourish Ministry will be hosting Women's Day on the third Sunday, April 21st at the Fountain of Praise. That's awesome. And we're going to have a special guest preacher, Pastor Taylor. We'll bring a blessed word for everyone on faith and spiritual growth. Ladies, we encourage you to wear shades of green and yellow on the third Sunday as a flourish in faith. If you would like to sing that Sunday, plan to attend choir rehearsal on Tuesday, April 9th and Thursday, April 18th. Come out and be a part. Additionally, there will be an interest meeting on tomorrow, Monday, April 8th at 7 p.m. for women who are interested in leading or starting a female-focused ministry at TFOP. We hope that you will be there at the Fountain Life Center. If you join the Fountain of Praise in this last quarter of 2023 or this year, make plans to attend the new members orientation class scheduled Saturday, May 18th at 8 a.m. You will gain the insight into spiritual foundations which will prepare you for the focused spiritual life. You can register online starting today. The Financial Education Ministry invites you to the Neapolitan Portfolio, a beginner's guide to diversified investing, which will be held on Friday, April 12th. This online course is designed especially for beginners. Discover the essentials of investing in stocks, bonds, and cash equivalents. Banish the fear and be equipped for the long-term wealth building. Don't miss out on this opportunity to empower yourself financially. Sign up online today. Hey, Fountain family, are you ready to take the next big step of purchasing a home? If yes, let us help you get equipped for this. The Home Buying Seminar on Saturday, April 20th will help you have a better understanding of the buying process, including financial options, budgeting, and choosing the right property. You will learn step-by-step -step with guidance, pre-approvals, inspections, and negotiations. You can sign up for the free seminar online. Fountain Family, next Sunday evening, April 14th, Jay Spivey Productions will present in concert Pastor John P. Key, Keelante, Gavin, Zaccardi Cortez, and others. This is a ticketed event, so head to tfop.org forward slash connect to grab yours. Can you believe tax season is winding down and you still need to file? Remember, you can get your taxes prepared at no cost through our VitaTax program offered through the Fountain of Praise and the community. Visit tfop.org slash connect for hours. Ready to bring more young adults to Christ? Join our discipleship training class every Thursday happening now until mid-May. You will gain a deeper understanding of what it means to be a disciple of Christ. You will grow spiritually and learn to effectively share your faith. Don't miss this opportunity to grow together. If you missed any of our details about our events, you will find the information at tfop.org slash connect. Let's stay connected. Follow and subscribe on all our social media at The Fountain of Praise. And a big warm welcome to all of our first time visitors. 
We're so glad you're here. Be sure to stop by the Agape Zone as you exit the sanctuary. We have a special gift just for you. Thanks for choosing to worship with us. Now, let's head into church. Praise. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you. We come to give you glory. God, we come to lift our hands to you, God. God, first of all, before we ask anything, we just ask that you would forgive us, God. Forgive us the things that we did knowingly and unknowingly. Father God, we pray now that you would just have your way in this place. Father God, we thank you now for what you've done, and we thank you for what you're going to do. Father God, we look to you because we know that you are our everything, and for God, without you, we can be nothing. Father God, we thank you now. We ask that your spirit would just flow in this place, God. We let your spirit fall fresh in this place, God. God, we come now asking that the man or woman who will stand on, their, on your behalf and deliver your word. Father God, we ask that that word would go forward and some soul will come crying, what must I do to be saved? Father God, we thank you now and we pray this prayer in your precious and holy name. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord, fountain of praise. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad, and I command my heart to bless the Lord. Come on, I command my soul to bless the Lord. I command my hands. Come on, can we put our hands together and bless the Lord? Anybody grateful? Come on, do we have any thankful people in the house? Has God made a way for you? Come on, has God healed your body? This morning, put your hands up and make some noise in here. Say you made a 
Jerusalem, you look good, you look good, you look good. You look prosperous. Tell somebody, you look like God has favored you. You look like your father's provided. You don't look hungry. You dressed up. You got on your Versace and you got on your Gucci and your JC Penny. Tell somebody, everything I have, the Father provided for me. So I'm not gonna stop worrying now. I'm not gonna stop worrying now. Cause God always, always. Everybody stop, three people to high five and say always, always, always. Always provides for me. Come on, Josh, here we go.
Sopranos. Now wait, bring it out. Now Sopranos, now wait a minute. Y'all supposed to be the gravy on top of the mashed potatoes. We gonna do a little bit better than that. Come on, Sopranos, get it together. One, two, all the Sopranos in the room, come on, say. Get, some, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. If God has been faithful to you this week, if you believe God's going to be faithful and supply your need this coming week, I want you to say it with all your might. Y'all ready? Talk back to me. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready? One, two, no music. Everybody, come on.
join us in altar prayer this morning. Those of you that would like to be anointed, please place your finger on your forehead so that the ministers will know that you desire to be anointed. As we are reminded this morning, we're walking by faith, not by sight. As we are reminded this morning that the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want, we don't have to want for anything. Our prayer focus this morning is we're focusing on courage. Lord God, we need you. We need you and we bless you. We glorify you. We magnify your holy name. Lord Almighty God, we've already set the atmosphere through worshiping your holy name to glorifying you for who you are. It is not about what you do. It is who you are to each and every one of us. Lord God Almighty Father, we know that you are our light. You are our salvation. Whom shall we fear? No one, Lord. For the Lord is our strong home. Whom shall we fear? No one, Lord. So we're asking you for the courage to walk by sight, by faith and not by sight. We're asking you for the courage to believe your word. We're asking you for the courage to love one to another. We're asking you for the courage to walk in the power and authority that you've given us. We're asking you for courage, Lord, to know that by Jesus' stripes, we are healed by the shed blood of Jesus. We are healed, we are redeemed, we are set free. We're asking for the courage, Lord, just as just Joshua, you said to be strong and courageous, to be courageous about the truth, to be courageous about peace, to be courageous about the boldness to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, we need you and we can't live without you. There are many here, God, that are in a strange situation. They don't understand. But Lord, if we could just hang on to the courage of God, if we could just hang on to the courage of God, knowing that you are the truth, the way, and the light. It is the courage that reminds us, the courage of God that reminds us that he is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our keeper. He's our way maker. He's our redeemer. He's our faithful, faithful one. He's our love. He's our peace. He's our joy. He's our strength. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Holy Spirit, we need you. Holy Spirit, you are our comforter and you are our helper. And we embrace whatever it is you have for us today. Whatever it is, you already know our needs before we have need of them. So, Lord, I thank you for the courage. I thank you for the peace. And I thank you for the love that your people have for you. But more than anything, the love that you have for us. It is in the name of Jesus Christ. We will continue to walk by faith and not by sight. We need to walk by faith and not by sight. It is the courage that redeems us. It is the courage that keeps us. It is the courage of the Lord. The courage of the Lord that will bring his promises to pass. We have to believe, saints. We have to know without a shadow of a doubt, the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want. We will not lack. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Put those hands one more time together if you know God is your supply. Yeah. 
Lord. Your faith in Jesus, I know you can do it. Cause you did it for me, yes you did. I know you can You restored my joy, oh yes you did. You gave me peace of mind. I know you can do it when it seems impossible. I know you can do it. And I'm wondering, Lord, Lord, when will it ever happen? I know you can. But in God's own time, He'll do it. In God's own time, Hallelujah.
you that have seen God do a miracle in your life and you need him to do another one for just 30 seconds we gonna give God a praise why and all of his kindness. Thank you, thank you, singers. Kurt, you seem like, boy, your energy's back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Sounds mighty good today. We thank God for each and every one of you that's watching us today. Uh, it's a joy to be in God's house again and to serve and to worship his name. It's always a privilege and a blessing to stand before his people. 
And I pray that your spiritual needs are met today. I'm going to go right into the word of God in the, the book of Ezekiel chapter number 37. Ezekiel chapter number 37. Won't you all be praying for me, my that God will give me the strength to preach again. This is what, four or five sermons in the last four or five days. And you know, I, I told some friends of mine yesterday that I thought as I got older, I would be preaching less. Seems like I'm preaching more. But I thank God, amen. 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 In the 37th chapter of the prophecy of Ezekiel, it says these words. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley. It was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, only you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy, preach to these bones. Say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, I preached as I was commanded. As I prophesied, there was a noise, suddenly, rattling. Bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Thank you. You may be seated. May God add a blessing to the hearing and the reading of his word. I said you can let people be seated. Let people come in and be seated. I, I want to talk from the subject today, armed and extremely dangerous. <laughs> armed and extremely dangerous. I want you for a few moments to consider really what you have in your hands when you have this holy book. Whether it be on the pages of this book or on your phone, on your iPad or whatever. I want you to really consider the power that you possess in your hands. We should know that God's word is what saves and delivers us from the powers of sin. And when we consider this and you think about God launching you by faith into this journey of Christendom, I want you to know that in truth, you are a terror to the devil. I know many of you don't believe that. Many of you look at it from the standpoint that he's the one that's always giving me the hard times or the difficulties. But I want you to know in the plan of God, it has been arranged that you walking in his favor by his faith are armed and extremely dangerous. Great Bible characters from the very beginning of time in taking God's word 
for what it says, have done some miraculous feats among the affairs of men. And, and I want you to know that today because I want you to realize that what you have is more than just a book. It's more than just a myth. It's more than just a legend. It is the very power of God that when we read it, when we speak it, and when we claim it, gives us the power to beat back the darkness. That this expression, arm and extremely dangerous, is a statement of caution. It's generally used when someone becomes a threat to society. Someone possesses the kind of weaponry that can render harm to others. It is a warning statement that identifies a person or persons who are not reluctant to use a weapon, either in defense or to overpower their victim. It shows us what we really have. And yet in the same way, those of us who represent the kingdom of God should pose a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Our entire existence should not be about coming from behind or fighting off the ropes. But there should be time that we are possessing the land. Times that we are claiming his promises. Time that we're experiencing his prosperity. Times that we're enjoying the elevation that God has placed in our lives. Friend, you need to know today, if you have seen God do any great thing for you, it is a result of your faith in God and your confidence in his word. <laughs> David said years ago, I'm now old, but I was once young, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. It's important that we notice that we have the power through this word to beat back the forces of darkness. Did not Jesus say, let your light so shine before men that they would see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven? Yes, my friend, the Bible lets us know that we are the light of the world. He has called us to be cities set on a hill that cannot be hid. That's the reason why people on your jobs and in your communities that have a problem with Christians have a problem with you because no matter what you do, you're going to always show up to shine. God has put you in that position. His word is our weapon. It's what we use and what he uses to revive us, to strengthen us to sustain us, and to guide us to victory. And, and to validate all of this, he has armed us with this word as a source of light and healing. But also, it's a vessel of protection and proclamation. By that I mean when we declare this word, things change. When we declare this word, miracles are set in motion. When we declare this word, things happen. And that's what God is seeking to show Ezekiel in this passage before us today. He wants Ezekiel to know the power that he's placed in his hands. And so when we look at this text today with this prophet by the name of Ezekiel, whose name literally means God strengthened, was called to breathe hope into a troubled nation. Now, I like Ezekiel uh, for a lot of different reasons, but primarily because Ezekiel had a very mystical way about him. All the prophets had their different personalities and dispositions. When you look at Jeremiah, you see Jeremiah, we call him the weeping prophet because all of his emotions were wrapped up in what God had called him to do for his people. So we call him the weeping prophet. When we look at Isaiah and we see his ability to see far into the future, well beyond what anybody could imagine, we call him the eagle-eyed prophet because his visions takes him way into the future. Ah, but with Ezekiel, with his mystical way about him and the odd signs and symbols that he uses, 
he would be classified as the eccentric prophet because he did those kind of things that were pretty difficult to understand. Remember, it was Ezekiel that saw the wheel in the middle of a wheel. It was Ezekiel that sat down by the river Chabar and saw what his people were going through. Ezekiel was this prophet whose name means God strengthens that comes to prepare the people for their deliverance and their victory. But when God brings him into this place, it's not business as usual. He doesn't give him a resume or a business plan. He doesn't give him military power and prowess. He, he doesn't give him connections with other astute people within his community. But the Bible tells us for God to get his people to the place that he wants them, he gives them the power that's wrapped up in his word. Sets them down by this bank and now he places in Ezekiel's lap the ability to see God's word restore his people. And I love this because Ezekiel lets us know at least three things that are prominent for us today that are students of the word. The first thing Ezekiel shows us is that you should know how to use your word. You should know how to use your weapon. If this word is a weapon that beats back the enemy, you should know how to use your weapon. I, I believe a major precaution for gun owners today is if, in fact, you own a weapon, you should know how to disassemble it. You, you should know how to clean it. You should know how to take care of it. Now, of course, I know I'm probably preaching uh, to the choir because none of you own weapons, I know. I guess the better question would be how many of you got weapons in here today? But, but I'm saying to you that we need to know how to utilize or to use the weapons that God has given us. And so when you think about proper uses, the Bible is our weapon, and we should know how to break it down. The Bible has 3,566,480 letters. It has 783,137 words. It has 31,101 verses, 1,189 chapters, 1,260 promises, 40 inspired writings, 66 books, two covenants. God gives us this to let us know that we have everything that we need. Friend, don't let the devil fool you into thinking that you don't have what you need. God has given you every single thing that you need. But, but then spiritually, you should learn how to apply this word to your situation. Learn how to use it for your best good. God calls Ezekiel into the spirit and sets him in this valley of bones. Bones that had been bleached by the sun. Bones that had been dried up by the desert wind. All around him now was lifelessness and devastation. What, what happens next is what really surprises me or is very unexpected to me. God asked Ezekiel after seating him in the midst of all these dead and dry bones. He says, son of man, can these bones live? God places him in a place where he now is surrounded by Nothing but heartache and hopelessness. And God poses this question, can these bones live? I believe Ezekiel didn't really know how to unpack this question. But I think I know what God was really getting at. You see, brothers and sisters, we cannot live the Christian life, the supernatural life in the natural without him. We can't live a supernatural life in the natural without him. I mean, we simply don't have the wisdom or the strength to do it. The only way to live this life is to let Christ live it through us. That's why the Bible says that we can be confident of this very thing. He that has begun a good work in you, he's going to finish what he started. We've got to understand that God is the one that has to live it through us, we, we can be the workers, but we must let him determine and define the work that we are to do. 
let, let me see if I can illustrate to get a little bit closer to you. I have in my hand a glove. And this is a work glove. Well made with good fabric to grip and to clutch, to keep water from dripping or seeping through. And, and just like us, this glove is designed for work. It's made to lift and to carry. So it ought to be able to do some work. So because it's able to do some work, I should be able to speak to this glove and say, glove, pick up this Bible. Well, it's made to work. I should be able to speak and watch this glove do what I ask it to do. But when I speak and tell the glove to do that, there is no response. It doesn't do anything. Well, maybe it just needs a little encouragement. Come on, glove, you can do it. You can make it happen with your pretty blue and gray self. And yet when I try to compliment it and encourage it, it still doesn't respond. You know, maybe... I needed to take this glove through discipleship training, new members orientation, a place some of you know nothing about. But maybe I should do that. Take it through new members orientation and then we can teach it the tenets. I can teach it that you take this thumb and you wrap these fingers around the book with that thumb and then you can lift it. But even after telling the glove that, there's no response. I'm in a quandary now. I don't know what to do. So maybe, maybe it's the fact that the glove has no fellowship. If I can get another glove with it. Now maybe this glove can touch and agree with this glove that the two of them can make something happen. And yet, in spite of all of my best efforts, I still don't see anything happening. I think it's a point that many of you have caught by now. And this is what I want to get you to see. Even though this glove is designed for work, it cannot do the work unless it has a living hand that's filling it up in every space and place. I put the one on backwards. The living hand filling it up in space and place. So the glove is designed to work. But the hand inside is designed to define what kind of work it wants the glove to do. And brothers and sisters, I'm telling you that because when we think about this word of God, this word of God is designed to work. But it works as we're filled with the spirit and walk by faith and tell this word what we need it to do. That's why Jesus said, if you have faith as of a grain of a mustard seed, you can speak to a mountain and tell the mountain to be carried into the midst of the sea and you shall have what you ask. Why? Because you're working with faith to make God's word come alive. I want you to see this because we're not able to live the supernatural life on our own. We can't do it with our own strength and talents. But when we learn to effectively use our weapons, we will be armed and extremely dangerous. And friend, I want you to get that today because many of us as Christians got to get off page one. We got to get out of kindergarten. Oh, come on. We got to grow up. Now. We, we've been walking with God too long and we've done too much shouting and too much talking in tongues and too much preaching and too much running. Not to know what it means to resist the devil. For the Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I wish I had a witness in here today. Somebody that just this morning know the enemy was trying to put something in your spirit, but you proclaimed the word of God and said, devil, get off of me. I want you to understand that we must learn how to use our weapon. That's the purpose. Mish, that weapon is here for the purpose of teaching us how to grow and to prosper. How to rebuke the depression. How to come against anxiety. How to bind suicide. How to call him a liar when he tells you that you'll always be a nobody. 
we, we've got to learn how to use this word to declare and decree to us what our full potential really is. That's the reason why Paul says in Philippians chapter number two, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his own good pleasure. You, you should learn how to utilize your weapon. But, but then secondly, you should know how to speak the word of God even in hopeless conditions. You should learn how to speak that word even in hopeless conditions. Prophet Ezekiel basically said to God when God told him to look and see if they could live, Ezekiel basically said, I don't have the strength, I don't have the wisdom, Lord, I don't have the know-how to answer that question. But how many people under the sound of my voice know the word works? Listen, I have seen people that were terminally ill get up off their deathbeds. I have seen people that were so strung out on drugs, they had lost family members, had lost loved ones, were not trusted by anybody, but in praying and seeking God and somebody speaking that word over their life, I've watched them be delivered and recover and walk in victory. Somebody say the word works. And here in chapter 37, Ezekiel is told to put God's word to work when hopelessness, hopelessness was all around. Everywhere he looked, there was nothing but death and destruction. Yet God speaks in the midst of this and says, can these bones live? Ezekiel didn't have the answer because he didn't realize that God was giving him a lesson in restoration. All throughout the Bible, when you think about it, God has allowed his children to face great difficulties. And then he encourages them to take his word, apply that to their everyday circumstances. The last book of the Bible, in Revelation, it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now keep in mind, Ezekiel's dealing with some tough issues now. The nation's condition for 70 years of captivity, for over 70 years, the, these people had faced a series of reverses. The glory of God had departed from the nation. Spiritual destiny of the nation was in question. And yet with all of this going on, the great I am God looks at Ezekiel and says, can these bones live? How many people have come to you from time to time telling you there's just no way that they can get out of their dilemma. There's just no way they can recover from the many blows and attacks of the enemy on their life. How many of you have enough faith in God's word to declare to them that the devil is a liar? The greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He's preparing Ezekiel for this difficult assignment. And in doing that, he has assessed and determined the possibilities of hope. He's given a vision with a landscape of nothing but dry bones. And yet, with depression and death on every hand, God encourages Ezekiel to know that there is strength in my word that can arm you with power and make you dangerous against the forces of darkness. I'm telling you right now, I believe that parents are still laying hands on their children and speaking life into their children. I believe that we are still encountering people that are trusting with their mothers and fathers that are old and elderly, that God will give them good life and strong life and peace of mind. I believe that through the power of God's word. See, little does Ezekiel realize that in his hands and in his mouth is unbelievable power. And I'm saying that because I believe somebody here this morning, I don't know who you are, but this is a word for you. Because you're here this morning facing impossibility. You're, you're at your wit's end and you don't know what to do. But God is telling you to take his word and speak to your circumstances. Take his word, speak to your circumstances. 
No, you don't have to be this great person of faith. You don't have to be this person that has 50 years tenure in the kingdom, but speak his word over your circumstances. Notice that Ezekiel was not told to speak about the bones, but he was told to speak to the bones. Speak to them. See, friend, I've discovered that most of us, it seems much easier for us to speak on a situation than to speak to a situation. You got a whole lot of people speaking on things, speaking on their hurt, speaking on their despair. A lot of people speaking on things, speaking on their job loss, speaking over that bad relationship. But the Bible says, don't speak on it, but speak to it. That's right, speak to it. Because we are armed with the word of God and when we speak it with authority, it can cause things to go. Sickness by the authority of God's word must go. Poverty by the authority of God's word must go. Insignificance by the power and authority of God's word must go. Intimidation by the power and authority of God's word must go. Fear by God's authority must go. Depression by the authority of God's word must go. Inadequacy by the authority of God's word must go. So that means every morning that you wake up, look in your mirror and speak that word to your mirror that this shall be a prosperous day. This shall be a blessed day because this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Tells Ezekiel, prophesy to the bones. It probably looked kind of crazy to be preaching to dead and bones. Yet Ezekiel takes God at his word and starts to do exactly what God tells him to do. This is my last point, and we're finished today. You've got to know that the spoken word will bring dead things back to life. Yeah, the spoken word will bring dead things back to life. The Bible now says that when Ezekiel starts to preach to these bones, that there was a great rattling and a great shaking. There was a great noise and a great clamor. And now these bones started to come together because wherever you have God's people gathered together in his name the Bible says he'll always be right there in the midst of them so now these bones started to come together from the foot to the head these bones gathered themselves together under the command of God the phalanges or the toe bone connected to the metatarsals or the ankle bone then the metatarsals connected to the tarsals, which are right there at the top of the ankle. And then they connected to the fibula, which is the lower part of the leg. And the fibula connected to the tibia, which is the upper part of the leg. And then the tibia connected to the patella, which is right at the knee bone. Then the patella connected to the femur, which is right at the top of the knee bone. And then the femur at the top of the knee bone, or the thigh bone, I should say, connected to the pelvic, which was the hip bone. So you, you see the picture now? God starts from the bottom and brings it all the way up. And isn't that how he does our lives sometimes? He lets impossibilities set in, and from the bottom to the top, God starts to move in a miraculous way. Let me get off the page so I can just go ahead and preach it now. And so the Bible says that now when Ezekiel starts to declare to these bones the word of the Lord, that they start to stand up as God had commanded them. And now not only do the bones come together, but the Bible says there's now sinew that wraps around the bones and then flesh that wraps around the sinew. But that's not all because the Bible says that even after they stand up, they're still very dry. They're still not living. And when God sees that they are not living, 
God now tells Ezekiel, prophesy or preach to the four winds. Call out to the north and the south and the east and the west and declare my word. Because, friend, I've found out that when you really speak the word of God, people's lives start to change. And I know this is a message for somebody watching and for somebody worshiping in the house today because there's some dry bones in this place right now. I've got some people in here right now that would not move no matter what God says. But when that word goes forth with power and authority, it'll start to clean up some things in your life, to straighten up some things in your heart to break up some things in your soul when that word goes forth. So the Bible says, now prophesy to the bones, to the four winds, call out his name. And the Bible declares that now these bones stood up with flesh and sinew and they began to be a standing army. This is the reason why you can go through the week and feel worn out and feel tired and feel exhausted because of what you face all week long. Oh, but friend, when you get to church on Sunday and the word starts going forth, it gives you a lift in your spirit. It puts running in your feet and clapping in your hands. And now you leave out smiling, telling the devil, I know you thought you had me, but you missed me this time. Because the word of God is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. That's what the word does. Let me talk to dry bones today. You don't have to be that way forever. If you tune in your ears and open up your heart, God will give you the solution to whatever problem that you're facing. Somebody shout yeah. So the Bible says that God raised up these dry bones, restored them, and revived them so that now they were a standing army. And friend, when you know that God has delivered you, the devil knows you're going to be a terror because there's some folk that say, I used to be so strung out every morning. The first thing I wanted to do was get high and late at night. The last thing I wanted to do is get high and you repeated that over and over again. But when the word of God found where you were and opened up your heart and settled your troubled mind, now you're a terror to the enemy. You're telling everybody that you run across. It is no secret what God can do, what is done for others. He'll do the same for you. Yes, my friend, I'm talking about resurrection power by the authority of God's word. And I want you to know today that God is resurrecting some people in this house this morning. Friend, you might have had some trouble all through last week, but God has now armed you with confidence and faith to trust in him. He's raising up men and women that are not ashamed to testify of his goodness, who are not ashamed to boast in his righteousness, who are not ashamed to declare his works among the people. Yes, my friend, that's what the word of God will do. And I want you to know, even beyond this life and this world that we're in, God is resurrecting things in the world to come. Because you need to understand that men and women that walk by faith, that have gone on to glory now, there's a day coming that God is going to come back. He's going to put one foot on the troubled sea and another foot on the shaking earth and raise his hand and declare that time will be no more and time that great tomb builder of the centuries is going to fall like a giant in ruin 
and God is going to speak again and collect all of those that have gone on before us. Somebody said Abraham is going to reach over and touch Isaac and Isaac is going to reach over and touch Jacob and Jacob is going to reach over and touch Joseph and Joseph's going to reach over and touch Judah and Judah's going to reach over and touch Moses and Moses is going to reach over and touch Joshua and Joshua is going to reach over and touch Gideon and Gideon's going to reach over and touch David and David's going to reach over and touch Solomon and Solomon's going to reach over and touch Uzziah and Uzziah's going to reach over and touch Matthew and Matthew's going to reach over and touch Mark and Mark's going to reach over and touch Luke and Luke's going to reach over and touch John and John's going to reach over and touch Thomas and Thomas is going to reach over and touch my mother and my mother's going to reach over and touch my daughter and my daughter's going to reach over and touch my granddaughter and they're going to stand up and sing together my soul looks back and wonders how I made it over I want you to know dead things can live again if you arm yourself with the word of God and carry his promises in your heart You'll see God do more than the incredible. Come on, deacons, preachers. We are armed. We are armed with the word, the word of God. Thy word, O Lord, have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. Ezekiel was facing an impossible task to do on his own camera. But it wasn't impossible for God to do through him because we serve the God of the impossible. God can reassemble your life and make you look better than you've ever looked before. I wonder how many people in here are transparent enough to say, I know what it feels like to go through hell, but I don't look like what I've been through. Because God, each and every time, Sherry, he brought me through. So it doesn't matter what people say. God has reassembled my faith and boosted my belief and enhanced my hopes that now I can walk with him in freedom and power. Can these bones live? Can you leave a facility of incarceration and yet get your life together in such a way that you're not only respected and admired but you're impacting on your community yes these bones can live you can get your mind together for God to work with you and through you in an unbelievable way yes these bones can live. Some of you are looking at me kind of strange and quizzically when in fact you know where you've come from that nobody but a God could have done this. But not any God, your God and my God. Nobody else can reach beyond that breaking point and pull you out. It's the power of God. Can these bones live? God is calling you today to 
a higher level of living. I want to extend an invitation as these deacons and preachers are standing here. And I want to ask you to just simply get on your feet. Someone will meet you where you are. Bless you, brother. Yeah, bless you, sister. Here comes a family. Come on. Somebody else ought to become, bless you. I see you, yes. Someone else ought to be coming. Someone else ought to be coming. You're not faced with impossibility. You're facing the God that said all things are possible. That's right. Come on, step out. Let her out. Let her out. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, they're coming now. They're coming now. They're coming now. They're coming now. Somebody sees that something new is about to happen. Something wonderful is about to take place. I see you, young brother. Yes, come on. Come on. Come on. God is ready to arm you with the power and the fortitude that you need. Yes, yes, I see. They're, com they're coming all over the building. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Walk this way. That's right. Come on. Whoever you are, we're looking for you. We're waiting for you. If you're seated next to somebody that you can tell that they're struggling, simply tell them, come on, I'll walk with you today. I'll walk with you today. I know what God is going to do. I know what God wants to do. All you have to do is come. Bless you. I see you coming in the overflow. Yes. Come on. Come on. It's still time. You still have time. Bless you. One, two, three, four. Come on. You still have time. You still have time. You still have time. You still have time. I want to give you 30 more seconds to make up your mind. I want to give you that length of time to make that decision. Young people, come on. Yes. Yes. Look at these young people coming. Yes, come on. God Almighty. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. That's right. That's right. Stretch out on faith right now, would you? Would you come on, somebody? Come on, somebody. Let God meet you at the point of your need. All you have to do is get up. Get up, get up, get up. God's going to meet you there. I see you, yes. Who are you? Bless you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Say it, y'all. on the edge of their seat right now trying to figure out if this is what God is telling them to do. Don't let another day go by that you sleep on this decision. Come on. There they are. There they are. There they are. Come on. It's still time. It's still time. We're not rushing on you. We're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. Come on. God is able. Somebody brought their situation here with them today. Bring it down here and leave it with us. Still time, it's still time. There he is. He's able. so good. God is so amazing. Guess what? It's offering time. Yeah, get excited for that too. It's offering time. One thing I learned about harvest is you will never get anything if you don't plant anything. A seed has to be sown for something to grow. Uh, I had a garden when I was younger. Well, a little younger than I am now. And I tell you, before I put anything in the dirt, it was just dirt. 
But as soon as I started sowing seeds in the fertile soil, I watched God turn my seed into a harvest. So I'm encouraging you today to dig down into your spirit, not just your pocket, and find out what it is that God desires you to give. And then prepare to give that. Don't forget that this Sunday is first Sunday, so we also do mission offering today. This is the offering where we take and we spread the love of Jesus Christ all over the world. As you guys know, we have a mission in Cachoeira, Brazil, and we have decided to partner with them for their school there. It is $1,400 a month just to make sure that their staff is paid and adequately, adequately taken care of. And we said, hey, $1,400 is more than most of us, a little less than most of us make every two weeks. So as a church family, we said we're going to help them to help their children. How many of y'all believe that, the, that Jesus Christ still wants the children all over the world? And so we can effect change from Houston all the way in Cachoeira just by being willing to give. Are you guys willing to give today? You sounded like it was two people who said yes. I heard it. Amen. With that being said, there are many different ways to give. They are going to put the information on the screen. And then if you have cash, you can uh, drop it in the pot as you go out. With that being said, co-pastor, can you take over? Amen. Let's pray over the offering. Father, we bless you and thank you in the name of Jesus for the opportunity to give into the kingdom of God. Thank you for every resource you've placed within our lives. Thank you for jobs. Thank you for businesses. Thank you for other extensions of money, oh God. We bless you and praise you, God, as you bless us that we are able to bless others. So, Father, use this moment, oh God, as our moment to give back unto you. And we thank you for it. We give you glory. And according to your word, God, we believe that it comes back to us many fold. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. And we thank God for the opportunity to give. And we also thank God for the word of God that has blessed us in our lives today. And as well as this moment to be remembered or to remember the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us. We ask all believers if you would stand in the house today, and if you're at home, if you would gather your communion elements, your bread, and your wine. And as you prepare to take this, we're going to ask Deacon E.J. Gary if he would bless our, our communion elements today as we prepare our hearts to be ready to receive that which God has given unto us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for last night's rising. Last night's lying down and this morning's rising to see another first Sunday. Thank you, Lord, for leaders, pastors that love us and provide a ministry for us to see another first Sunday. Lord, please bless this bread, bread that represents your body, your body that was beaten and bruised for us. Please, Lord, bless this wine that represents your blood, blood that was shed for us shed for the remission of our sins and now lord we ask for your forgiveness lord if there's anything in us our minds bodies and souls that is unlike you please remove it lord please wash us cleanse us and make us whole lord we ask all these things in the mighty magnificent name of your son our lord and savior the risen christ in jesus name we pray amen on the night that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was to be betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it. He broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body broken for your sins. Take this and eat. His body was broken just for me. In the same manner, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, which is shed for the remission of sin take and drink his blood was shed just for me and he went on to teach them about the new covenant by which they became and each of us belong to today the bible teaches us that if anyone be in christ the old has passed away and all things are made new and so you my brothers my sisters you represent the new covenant of what it means to be in christ we are no longer strangers or foreigners, but we are sons and daughters of God. So today we celebrate this moment. Today we remember this sacrifice and we honor what God has done for us. Amen. 
Just look at somebody as you're taking your seat and tell them it's good to see you today. Amen, amen. And as you're taking your seat, we want to celebrate the harvest of souls that God is blessed to be part of the fountain of praise today. Amen. Somebody say harvest. Amen. As you're celebrating, we want to ask all who are joining today, if you would please come to the center aisle and the care disciples are going to meet you and intake you into our family right here at the fountain of praise. Amen. Amen. As we're in taking our new members, I want to give a quick reminder to all of our members that our announcements run at the beginning of the services. And so if you miss announcements, we encourage you to go back to Facebook or to Instagram and get those announcements. But let me share a couple things. First, let me say thank you, thank you, thank you again for the hospitality, the generosity, and the love you share for my birthday. Y'all make an old girl feel pretty good. So I want to say thank you. Thank you again. I said that was supposed to slide this year in under the radar, but y'all wouldn't let me. And I thank you for being such a blessing to me in my life. Um, also, I want to encourage all the sisters that are interested in leadership and ministry here at the Fountain of Praise. Meet me tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at the Fountain Life Center. We'll have an interest meeting for women who are interested in ministry. And then uh, not just ministry, but leading one of the ministries. And then also on the third Sunday, we encourage all the sisters to come in shades of green, yellow, and blue as we'll celebrate the Flourish Women's Day here at the Fountain of Praise. And we look forward to having a special guest preacher, Pastor Shalandria Taylor from Sacramento, California. California. It's going to be a high day right here at the Fountain of Praise. If you're interested in singing this Tuesday, Sister Melanie Bivens and Sister Pamela will be hosting the women's choir rehearsal. So come out Tuesday night if you want to sing. We're going to have a full choir of women that can really sing. Amen. So if you can really sing, really sing, show up. Amen. All right, let's stand as we prepare to go home. We thank God for each of you. Remember, we're in the book of Psalms still. Thank you, Brother Kirk, for being here and your fellowship today. Amen. Thank you for everyone who has made it into uh, service today. We pray that God will bless you and keep you, that he make his face shine upon you, that he be gracious, turn his countenance toward you, and give you his peace. God bless you. Have a great week in the Lord. We look forward to seeing you again right here at the Fountain of Praise.